Jeffrey David Sachs, born November 5, 1954, is an American economist, public policy analyst, and former director of the Earth Institute at Columbia University, where he holds the title of university professor, the highest rank Columbia bestows on its faculty. He is known as one of the world's leading experts on economic development and the fight against poverty. Sachs is the Quetelet Professor of Sustainable Development at Columbia's School of International and Public Affairs and a Professor of Health Policy and Management at Columbia's School of Public Health. As of 2017, he serves as Special Advisor to the United Nations UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres on the Sustainable Development Goals SDGs, a set of 17 global goals adopted at a UN summit meeting in September 2015. He held the same position under the previous UN Secretary General Ban Ki moon and prior to 2016 a similar advisory position related to the earlier Millennium Development Goals MDGs, eight internationally sanctioned objectives to reduce extreme poverty, hunger and disease by the year 2015. In connection with the MDGs, he had first been appointed Special Advisor to the UN Secretary General in 2002 during the term of Kofi Annan. In 1995, Sachs became a member of the International Advisory Council of the Center for Social and Economic Research. Case. He is co founder and chief strategist of Millennium Promise Alliance, a non profit organization dedicated to ending extreme poverty and hunger. From 2002 to 2006, he was director of the United Nations Millennium Project's work on the MDGs. He is director of the UN Sustainable Development Solutions Network and co-editor of the World Happiness Report with John F. Heliwell and Richard Layard. In 2010, he became a commissioner for the Broadband Commission for Sustainable Development, whose stated aim is to boost the importance of broadband in international policy. Sachs has written several books and received many awards. Early life and education Sachs was raised in Oak Park, a suburb of Detroit, Michigan, the son of Joan nay Abrams, and Theodore Sachs, a labor lawyer. He graduated from Oak Park High School and attended Harvard College, where he received his Bachelor of Arts Summa Cum Laude in 1976. He went on to receive his MA and PhD in economics from Harvard with his thesis titled Factor Costs and Macroeconomic Adjustment in the Open Economy, Theory and Evidence and was invited to join the Harvard Society of Fellows while still a Harvard graduate student. <laughs> <laughs> Academic career <laughs> Harvard University In 1980, Sachs joined the Harvard faculty as an assistant professor and was promoted to associate professor in 1982. A year later, at the age of 28, he became a full professor of economics with tenure at Harvard. During the next 19 years at Harvard, Sachs became the Galen L. Stone Professor of International Trade, director of the Harvard Institute for International Development at the Kennedy School of Government (1995–1999) and director of the Center for International Development (1999–2002). Topic: Columbia University. From 2002 to 2016, Sachs served as director of the Earth Institute of Columbia University, a university-wide organization of more than 850 professionals from natural science and social science disciplines with a common mission to address complex issues facing the Earth, in support of sustainable development. Sachs's classes are taught at the School of International and Public Affairs and the Mailman School of Public Health, and his course, Challenges of Sustainable Development is taught at the undergraduate level. Sachs has consistently advocated for the expansion of university education on sustainable development. He helped to introduce the PhD in Sustainable Development at Columbia University, one of the first PhD programs of its kind in the United States and championed the new Masters of Development Practice (MDP), which led to a consortium of major universities around the world offering the new degree. The Earth Institute also guided the adoption of sustainable development as a new major at Columbia College. Topic: <laughs> Arnhold Institute for Global Health. 
In 2016, Sachs was appointed to a two-year fellowship at the Arnhold Institute at the Icahn School of Medicine at Mount Sinai at Mount Sinai Health System which is mentioned in a lawsuit filed in April 2019 for sex and age discrimination against the director of the institute, Dr. Prabjo Singh and others. Sachs was given a part-time role equivalent to a full-time position at $1 million per year. For the fellowship and appointed to the executive board, Sachs's policy and academic works span the challenges of globalization and include the relationship of trade and economic growth, the resource curse and extractive industries, public health and economic development, economic geography, strategies of economic reform, international financial markets, macroeconomic policy, global economy competitiveness, climate change and the end of poverty. He has written or co-authored hundreds of scholarly articles and several books, including three bestsellers and a textbook on macroeconomics. In 2011, Sachs called for the creation of a third American political party, the Alliance for the Radical Center. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Scholarship and commentary. Topic. <laughs> Advising in post-communist economies Sachs has worked as an economic advisor to governments in Latin America, Eastern Europe and the former Soviet Union. A trained macroeconomist, he advised a number of national governments in the transition from Marxism-Leninism or developmentalism to market economies. When Bolivia was shifting from a dictatorship to a democracy through national elections in 1985, Sachs was invited by the party of Bolivian dictator Hugo Banza to advise him on an anti-inflation economic plan to implement once he was voted to office. This stabilization plan centered around price deregulation, particularly for oil, along with cuts to the national budget. Sachs stated that his plan could end Bolivian hyperinflation which had reached up to 14,000% in a single day. Although Banza ultimately lost the race to the party of former elected president and traditionally developmentalist Victor Paz Estensoro, Sachs's plan was still implemented through plans that excluded most of Paz's cabinet. Inflation quickly stabilized in Bolivia. In 1989, Sachs advised Poland's anti communist solidarity movement and the government of Prime Minister Tadeusz Mazowiecki. He wrote a comprehensive plan for the transition from central planning to a market economy which became incorporated into Poland's reform program led by Finance Minister Leszek Balcerowicz. Sachs was the main architect of Poland's debt reduction operation. Sachs and IMF economist David Lipton advised the rapid conversion of all property and assets from public to private ownership. Closure of many uncompetitive factories ensued. In Poland, Sachs was firmly on the side of rapid transition to capitalism. At first, he proposed American-style corporate structures, with professional managers answering to many shareholders and a large economic role for stock markets. That did not bode well with the Polish authorities, but he then proposed that large blocks of the shares of privatized companies be placed in the hands of private banks. As a result, there were some economic shortages and inflation, but prices in Poland eventually stabilized. The government of Poland awarded Sachs with one of its highest honors in 1999, the Commander's Cross of the Order of Merit. He also received an honorary doctorate from the Krakow University of Economics. Sachs's ideas and methods of transition from central planning were adopted throughout the transition economies. He advised Slovenia 1991 and Estonia 1992 in the introduction of new stable and convertible currencies. Based on Poland's success, he was invited first by Soviet President Mikhail Gorbachev and then by Russian President Boris Yeltsin on the transition to a market economy. He served as advisor to Prime Minister Yegor Gaidar and Finance Minister Boris Fedorov during 1991-1993 on macroeconomic policies. <laughs> <laughs> Work on global economic development More recently, Sachs has turned to global issues of economic development, poverty alleviation, health and aid policy and environmental sustainability. He has written extensively on climate change, disease control and globalization. Since 1995, he has been engaged in efforts to alleviate poverty in Africa. In his 2005 work The End of Poverty, Sachs wrote that, "...Africa's governance is poor because Africa is poor." According to Sachs, with the right policies and key interventions, extreme poverty—defined as living on less than $1 a day—can be eradicated within 20 years. 
India and China serve as examples, with the latter lifting 300 million people out of extreme poverty during the last two decades. Sachs has said that a key element to accomplishing this is raising aid from $65 billion in 2002 to $195 billion a year by 2015. He emphasizes the role of geography and climate as much of Africa is landlocked and disease prone. However, he stresses that these problems can be overcome. Sachs suggests that with improved seeds, irrigation, and fertilizer, the crop yields in Africa and other places with subsistence farming can be increased from one ton per hectare to three to five tons per hectare. He reasons that increased harvests would significantly increase the income of subsistence farmers, thereby reducing poverty. Sachs does not believe that increased aid is the only solution. He also supports establishing credit and microloan programs which are often lacking in impoverished areas. Sachs advocates the distribution of free insecticide-treated bed nets to combat malaria. The economic impact of malaria has been estimated to cost Africa $12 billion per year. Sachs estimates that malaria can be controlled for $3 billion per year, therefore, suggesting that anti malaria projects would be an economically justified investment. The Millennium Villages Project, MVP, which he directs, operates in more than a dozen African countries and covers more than 500,000 people. The MVP has engendered considerable controversy associated as critics have questioned both the design of the project and claims made for its success. In 2012, The Economist reviewed the project and concluded. The evidence does not yet support the claim that the Millennium Villages project is making a decisive impact. Critics have pointed to the failure to include suitable controls that would allow an accurate determination of whether the MVP methods were responsible for any observed gains in economic development. A 2012 Lancet paper claiming a three fold increase in the rate of decline in childhood mortality was criticized for flawed methodology, and the authors later admitted that the claim was unwarranted and misleading. Sachs works closely with the Islamic Development Bank to scale up programs of integrated rural development and sustainable agriculture among the bank's member countries. One such project supports pastoralist communities in Eastern Africa, with six participating nations, namely Djibouti, Ethiopia, Somalia, Kenya, Uganda and South Sudan. Following the adoption of the Millennium Development Goals MDGs in 2000, Sachs was among the leading academic scholars and practitioners on the MDGs. He chaired the WHO Commission on Macroeconomics and Health 2000-2001, which played a pivotal role in scaling up the financing of health care and disease control in the low-income countries to support MDGs 4, 5 and 6. He worked with UN Secretary-General Kofi Annan in 2000-2001 to design and launch the Global Fund to Fight AIDS, Tuberculosis and Malaria. He also worked with senior officials of the George W. Bush administration to develop the PEPFAR program to fight HIV, AIDS and the PMI to fight malaria. On behalf of Annan, from 2002 to 2006 he chaired the UN Millennium Project which was tasked with developing a concrete action plan to achieve the MDGs. The UN General Assembly adopted the key recommendations of the UN Millennium Project at a special session in September 2005. The recommendations for rural Africa are currently being implemented and documented in the MVP and in several national scale-up efforts such as in Nigeria. Presently a special advisor to Secretary General Antonio Guterres, Sachs is an advocate for the 2015 Sustainable Development Goals which build upon and supersede the MDGs. In his capacity as a special advisor at the UN, Sachs has frequently met with foreign dignitaries and heads of state. He developed a friendship with international celebrities Bono and Angelina Jolie, who traveled to Africa with Sachs to witness the progress of the Millennium Villages. Sachs has consistently criticized the International Monetary Fund and its policies around the world and blamed international bankers for what he claims is a pattern of ineffective investment strategies. During the Greek government debt crisis in July 2015, Sachs, with Heiner Flassbeck, Thomas Piketty, Danny Roderick, and Simon Wren Lewis, published an open letter to the Chancellor of Germany Angela Merkel. Regarding Greek debt, Sachs is one of the founders of the Deep Decarbonization Pathways Project. In April 2018, he supported President Donald Trump's view that the United States should come out of Syria very soon, adding, It's long past time for the United States to end its destructive military engagement in Syria and across the Middle East, though the security state seems unlikely to let this happen. Critical reception 
Sachs's economic philosophies have been the subject of both praise and criticism. One of Sachs's strongest critics is William Easterly, a professor of economics at New York University. Easterly reproached the end of poverty in his review for the Washington Post and Easterly's 2006 book White Man's Burden is a response to Sachs's argument that poor countries are stuck in a poverty trap from which there is no escape except by massively scaled up foreign aid. Sachs himself has emphasized the need for a multifaceted approach to economic development, of which increased and responsible foreign aid is nearly always a necessary part. Easterly presents statistical evidence that he claims proves that many emerging markets attained their higher status without the large amounts of foreign aid Sachs proposes. Nina Monk, author of the 2013 book The Idealist, Jeffrey Sachs and the Quest to End Poverty, says that although well intended poverty eradication projects endorsed by Sachs have years later left people even worse off than before. Commenting on Sachs' $120 million effort to aid Africa, author Paul Theroux says these temporary measures failed to create sustaining improvements and only created dependence. A 2019 report authored by Sachs and Mark Weisbrot claimed that a 31% rise in the number of deaths between 2017 and 2018 was due to the sanctions imposed on Venezuela in 2017 and that 40,000 people in Venezuela may have died as a result. The report states. The sanctions are depriving Venezuelans of life-saving medicines, medical equipment, food, and other essential imports." Weisbrot stated that he "...could not prove those excess deaths were the result of sanctions, but said the increase ran parallel to the imposition of the measures and an attendant fall in oil production." A United States Department of State spokesperson commented that, "...as the writers themselves concede, the report is based on speculation and conjecture." Harvard economist Ricardo Hausman, Juan Guaido's representative to the Inter-American Development Bank, asserts that the analysis is flawed because it makes invalid assumptions about Venezuela based on a different country like Colombia, saying that, "...taking what happened in Colombia since 2017 as a counterfactual for what would have happened in Venezuela if there had been no financial sanctions makes no sense." Calling it, "...sloppy reasoning." The authors also state that the analysis failed to rule out other explanations and failed to correctly account for PDVSA finances. When asked about the death toll of 40,000 brought on by sanctions during an interview on Democracy Now!, Sachs responded, Let me be clear, nobody knows. This was a very basic, simple calculation based on estimates of universities in Venezuela that mortality had increased by a certain proportion after the sanctions. I don't want anyone to think that there is precision in these numbers. What is certain, though, staring us in the face, is that there is a humanitarian catastrophe, deliberately caused by the United States, by what I would say are illegal sanctions, because they are deliberately trying to bring down a government and trying to create chaos for the purpose of an overthrow of a government. <laughs> Personal life Sachs lives in New York City with his wife Sonia Ehrlich Sachs, a pediatrician. They have three children, namely Lisa, Adam and Hannah Sachs. <laughs> Awards and honors In 2017, Professor Jeffrey D. Sachs and Dr. Sonia Ehrlich Sachs were the joint recipients of the first World Sustainability Award. In 2015, Sachs was awarded the Blue Planet Prize for his contributions to solving global environmental problems. In 2004 and 2005, he was named one of the 100 most influential people in the world by the time. He was also named one of the 500 most influential people in the field of foreign policy. By the World Affairs Councils of America, in 2005, Sachs received the Sergeant Shriver Award for Equal Justice. In 2007, he was awarded the Padma Bhushan, the third highest civilian honor bestowed by the Government of India. Also in 2007, he received the Cardozo Journal of Conflict Resolution International Advocate for Peace Award and the Centennial Medal from the Harvard Graduate School of Arts and Sciences for his contributions to society. In 2007, Sachs received the S. Roger Horchow Award for Greatest Public Service by a Private Citizen, an award given out annually by Jefferson Awards. From 2000 to 2001, Sachs was chairman of the Commission on Macroeconomics and Health of the World Health Organization, WHO, and from 1999 to 2000, he served as a member of the International Financial Institution Advisory Commission established by the United States Congress. 
Sachs has been an advisor to the WHO, the World Bank, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, the International Monetary Fund, and the United Nations Development Programme. He is a member of the Institute of Medicine, the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, Harvard Society of Fellows, the Fellows of the World Econometric Society, the Brookings Panel of Economists, the National Bureau of Economic Research and the Board of Advisors of the Chinese Economists Society, among other international organizations. Sachs is also the first holder of the Royal Professor Unku Aziz Chair in Poverty Studies at the Center for Poverty and Development Studies at the University of Malaya in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia for 2007–2009. He holds an honorary professorship at the Universidad del Pacifico in Peru. He has lectured at the London School of Economics, the University of Oxford and Yale University and in Telefona Vivan Jakarta. In September 2008, Vanity Fair ranked Sachs 98th on its list of 100 members of the new establishment. In July 2009, Sachs became a member of the Netherlands Development Organization's International Advisory Board. In 2009, Princeton University's American Whig Cleosophic Society awarded Sachs the James Madison Award for Distinguished Public Service. In 2016, Sachs became president of the Eastern Economic Association, succeeding Janet Curry. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Honorary degrees. Sachs has received honorary degrees from Bryant University, the College of the Atlantic, the Connecticut College, the Krakow University of Economics in Poland, the Iona College, the Lehigh University, the Lingnan College in Hong Kong, the McGill University, the Mount Sinai School of Medicine, the Ohio Wesleyan University, the Pace University, the St. John's University, the Simon Fraser University, the Southern Methodist University, the Southern New Hampshire University, the State University of New York, the University of Brescia in Italy, the University University of St. Gallen in Switzerland, the University of Economics Varna in Bulgaria, the Ursinus College, the Whitman College, the University of Michigan and the Ada University. Publications Sachs has written hundreds of academic articles and many books, including three New York Times bestsellers, namely The End of Poverty, Economic Possibilities for Our Time Penguin, 2005, Commonwealth, Economics for a Crowded Planet Penguin, 2008 and The Price of Civilization, Reawakening American Virtue and Prosperity Random House, 2011. His Building the New American Economy was published in 2017. Sachs writes a monthly foreign affairs column for Project Syndicate, a non-profit association of newspapers around the world that is circulated in 145 countries. He is also a frequent contributor to such major publications as the Financial Times, the Scientific American, Time and the Huffington Post. In 2011, Sachs has written the new article, Effective Monitoring of Agriculture, for the Journal of Environmental Monitoring. The article is addressed three main critiques labeled as the passive approach, the problem with uniform metrics, and the problem with composite metrics. Topic selected works Sachs, Jeffrey 2017. Building the New American Economy, Smart, Fair, and Sustainable. Columbia University Press ISBN 978-0-231-18404-5 Sachs, Jeffrey March 3, 2015. The Age of Sustainable Development. Columbia University Press ISBN 0231173156 Sachs, Jeffrey June 4, 2013. To Move the World, JFK's Quest for Peace. Random House, ISBN 978-0812994926 Sachs, Jeffrey October 4, 2011. The Price of Civilization, Reawakening American Virtue and Prosperity Random House ISBN 978-1-4000-6841-8 Sachs, Jeffrey D. June 2010. Millennium Development Goals at 10. Scientific American. 302 6, 17. Sachs, Jeffrey 2008. Commonwealth, Economics for a Crowded Planet Penguin Press HCISBN 978-1-59420-127-1 Humphreys, McCartan, Sachs, Jeffrey, and Stiglitz, Joseph, eds. Escaping the Resource Curse Columbia University Press ISBN 978-0-231-14196-3 Sachs, Jeffrey 2005. The End of Poverty, Economic Possibilities for Our Time Penguin Press HCISBN 1-59420-045-9 Sachs, Jeffrey 2002. 
A New Global Effort to Control Malaria Science, Vol. 298, October 4, 2002 Sachs, Jeffrey 2002. Resolving the Debt Crisis of Low-Income Countries Brookings Papers on Economic Activity, 2002-1 Sachs, Jeffrey 2001. The Strategic Significance of Global Inequality The Washington Quarterly, Vol. 24, No. 3, Summer 2001 Sachs, Jeffrey 1997. Development Economics Blackwell Publishers ISBN 0-8133-3314-8 Sachs, Jeffrey and Pista, Katharina 1997. The Rule of Law and Economic Reform in Russia John M. Olin Critical Issues Series Paper Westview Press ISBN 0-8133-3314-8 Sachs, Jeffrey 1994. Poland's Jump to the Market Economy Lionel Robbins Lectures MIT Press ISBN 0-262-69174-4 Sachs, Jeffrey and Lorraine B. Felipe 1993. Macroeconomics in the Global Economy Prentice Hall ISBN 0-13-102252-0 Sachs, Jeffrey, ed. 1991. Developing Country Debt and Economic Performance, Volume 1, The International Financial System National Bureau of Economic Research Project Report University of Chicago Press ISBN 0-226-73332-7 Sachs, Jeffrey and Warwick McKibben Global Linkages, Macroeconomic Interdependence and Cooperation in the World Economy, Brookings Institution, June, 277 pages. ISBN 0 8157 5600 3. Sachs, Jeffrey, ed. 1989. Developing Country Debt and the World Economy, National Bureau of Economic Research Project Report, University of Chicago Press, ISBN 0 226 73338 6. Bruno, Michael and Sachs, Jeffrey, 1984. Stagflation in the World Economy. Topic. See also Deep Decarbonization Pathways Project Grow Harlem Brundtland Neocolonialism The Shock Doctrine Notes <laughs>